Today we're going to learn to take a raw file like this and turn it into a final image just like this entirely within Lightroom. Greetings and salutations, my photo freaks, and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now, today's on the program, I'm going to learn you how to take a photo from a raw file that looks like this on the left and turn it into this final image here on the right. And forgive me for talking quickly, but I got a lot to get through, and I want to keep the video nice and short. So you can see there's actually a huge difference between the raw file that came out of my camera and the final image as presented here. And the reason for that is because when I'm shooting in the field, I'm not necessarily trying to get the best-looking photo on the back of my camera. Instead, I'm trying to capture the best possible data, which then I can turn into a great-looking image here in Lightroom. And so when I'm in the field, I'm more focused on things like not blowing out the image, making sure I don't have any clipping, rather than trying to get the best possible contrast saturation and detail, that sort of stuff. Now, if you've never used Lightroom before, if you're trying to learn how to use it, I would recommend checking out this full-length tutorial here on my website. It's two hours of content that goes through everything you need to know about the develop module here in Lightroom. It goes through every tool, some of my best practices, favorite techniques, all that sort of stuff. So if you really want to understand how to use Lightroom intelligently and well, check out that tutorial. And I'll link to it again at the end of the video. If you watch this and you were lost the whole time, go check that out. Okay, now when you're editing any photo, that editing process should be an extension of your artistic vision. What I mean by that is when you take a photo, you do that because you notice something that catches your attention. And in your processing, you should try to bring out that feature, whether it's a specific thing like these flowers or an idea like a mood or a contrast between two subjects. Your processing should be designed to enhance that idea. So, for example, if I take a look at just the raw image here. What I really loved about this scene was the bright gold of the flowers, the beautiful textures in the clouds, and the great detail here in the mountains. So those are the three things that I really want to bring out in my image to match the vision that was in my head when I actually took the photo. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So I need to reset this guy back to zero. There we go. So this is a raw file as it came out of the camera. As you can see, it's nice and flat. It's not that attractive, and that's because I'm trying to get the best possible data that I can juice up now here in Lightroom. Before I start any edit, there's always a couple of things that I like to do. One is to make sure that my camera calibration is set to camera flat or camera neutral, and that gives me the most basic possible starting point so that I can choose all the edits to apply instead of some of the presets where either your camera or Lightroom is applying some contrast and saturation. The other thing is to make sure that under my lens correction tab, I have remove chromatic aberration ticked. One of the first things I want to do to this image is straighten it out a little bit. Even though my camera was perfectly level in the field when I took this photo, now here after the fact, the fact that the mountains are sliding down a little bit from right to left makes the image look unbalanced in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the R key, which will bring up my crop. And I'm just going to rotate this a little bit, not a huge amount. I don't want the mountains to be perfectly level because then I've cropped off a massive amount of my image, but just some amount so that they are more level, kind of a good compromise between, yeah, maybe something, no, that's a little bit too much. Let's dial this in manually, kind of like that. Oops. There we go. So now my photo looks a little bit more level. Perfect. Now, because this was shot in the camera flat, mode, it looks really, really, really flat. And so one of the things I can do to begin bringing out some of the detail is just add a little bit of dehazing, which is the opposite of what frats do to their pledges. We're trying to build people up, not tear them down. All right. Now, as you can see, I shot this photo at ISO 200. And the reason for that is because it was fairly windy and I wanted to try to freeze the flower, the freeze the flowers in place. In place. So that added a tiny little bit of grain to the image, which may or may not come through on the video, but uh, it's here, trust me. And so what I'm gonna do is jump over to the detail tab and add just a little bit of noise reduction here in the luminance channel, and that's gonna smooth out that grain there in the sky. And I'll go ahead and hit Z key, that'll zoom me back out, great. Now we're ready for some basic, basic adjustments. Because when I shot this, I was trying not to blow out the highlights there in the sky, the image overall is underexposed. And so I want to increase the exposure a little bit to compensate for that. Maybe something like that. 
And I'm also going to, because that now made the clouds quite bright, I'm gonna pull down my highlights just to get those a little bit more balanced with the rest of the frame. Now, if you look at the histogram, you can see I don't have any clipped shadows, I don't have any clipped highlights, so I'm not gonna to worry too much about the shadows, whites, and blacks. Instead, I'm gonna jump down here into my presence and add a little bit of clarity, and what that does is it helps bring out local contrast throughout the image. Next, I'm gonna add some vibration, which is a mixture of vibrance and saturation, just because I love the color of those flowers and I'm gonna to try to bring it out. So if I drag that up, I've injected a lot of color into the image, but it's really made the kind of overall warmish yellow tint of the photo apparent. So I am gonna to try to neutralize that by changing my white balance. I'm gonna cool it down a little bit and that's gonna give me a better balance between the blues in the sky and the warms down there in the flowers. And to get rid of some of that yellowish tint, I'm actually gonna increase the amount of magenta here just to kind of get rid of that. Yeah, maybe something like uh, that. I think that looks pretty good. Cool. Now again, the things, the three things I wanna do, bring out the flowers, bring out the textures in the clouds, bring out the textures in the mountains. Let's go ahead and start with the flowers. And the way I'm gonna do that is with a grad filter. So you can either click up here on your grad filter adjustment or hit the M key as in Mighty Mike's Meat Management Market. And that will bring up your grad filter. So. To bring out the flowers, I basically just wanna brighten them up and add some contrast, and that will help bring them out in a nice way. So let me just drag some exposure up to gas, drag some contrast up to gas, and we'll add a little bit of clarity and dehazing too, and that will help that maybe too much on those guys. I'm just sort of guessing here. You can always adjust after the fact. Maybe a teensy little bit more exposure. There we go, perfect. And a teensy little bit more contrast. All right, groovy. Um, yeah, and I think there's still a little bit of excess yellow tint here. I wouldn't mind a little more separation and color between the greens of the foliage and the leaves and the yellows of the flower. So I'm gonna drag down my temperature just a touch and that's gonna help me bring out those two colors independently. Groovy. So now we brought out the flowers a little bit more. Now I want to jump on those clouds. So we're going to add a new grad filter. And in this case, we're going to actually darken it down instead of brightening it up. So we're going to pull that exposure down a little bit and we're going to increase some contrast. And that's just going to help the sky have a little bit more punch. Maybe it doesn't need to be that broad. There we go. Cool. So a little bit more punch there. Maybe I'll pull down some of the highlights a little bit to try to deal with those really hot spots. Now, I don't want it getting too dark, so I'm actually going to pull up my shadows a little bit more. I think let's add a little bit more contrast as well. And we can bring out more detail, again, the same way, by adding a little bit of clarity and a little bit of dehazing. And that'll really help that sky start to get punchy, punchy, punchy. Groovy. Now, maybe... Adding that dehazing kind of brought out some of the blue tones a little bit more. I wouldn't mind if it wasn't quite so cool. So I'm going to increase the temperature a little tiny bit and maybe decrease just a kiss of magenta. It's maybe a little bit, a tiny bit too much up there. Perfect. And now you can see the, the exposure overall is getting very, very even across the frame, giving us this very nice bell-shaped histogram, which will be super important in just a little bit when I go to add global contrast to the whole image. But first, I wanted to bring out more detail and texture here in the mountains. So I'm gonna do that with my adjustment brush. If you click there, or you can hit K, and that will bring up the adjustment brush. So what I wanna do is bring out those textures by increasing their exposure and increasing their contrast. Let me reset all these guys, there we go. Now, the other thing I wanna do in this case is make sure that my auto mask is ticked because I only wanna apply those to the mountains and not to the sky. And Lightroom is really good at finding edges like that. So click that auto mask, perfect. So let's just dial in to start a little bit of an exposure increase and a little bit of a contrast increase. We can also use the same trick we did on the sky and add some clarity and some dehazing. So if I start to paint in here, and I always use a nice low flow, and that really helps you be um, quite, quite well controlled as you paint in these adjustments. I can hover over that and it'll show me where I've put it in. That's perfect, just on the mountains as I want. 
If we toggle that on and off, you can see it's starting to make a little bit of an adjustment, but not a strong enough one yet. So here's a cool little trick that you can do if you have an adjustment dialed in that you just want to make stronger. You can hover over the control point, then hold Alt or Option, and it'll bring up this little left right arrow. If you click and drag to the right, it'll make the adjustment stronger. If you click and drag to the left, it makes the adjustment weaker. So I'm just going to click and drag to the right there, and that's going to make that contrast exposure and all that adjustment much, much stronger like that. I turn that on and off. You can see, yeah, look how much I'm bringing out the details there in my mountains. I can even add a little bit of sharpening, maybe add a little bit more down here. And now those craggy details are way more apparent. At this point, we've got a very nice evenly lit image overall, and it's time to add that global contrast. So I'll just go ahead and hit done down here. And I love adding contrast with my tone curve because it lets me target the exact tonal regions, target the exact tonal regions that I want to adjust. Now, because this histogram is super duper well behaved, I'm just going to put in a nice classic S curve. So I'm going to click over here kind of on the right shoulder of the histogram and drag that up. And then I'm going to click over here kind of on the left side and drag that down, just salting the taste until I think I've got something that looks nice and punchy. That may be a little too much. There we go. Yeah. All right, now that really injected that great amount of punch and contrast into the photo. You can see it maybe made these clouds up here just a little bit too hot. So I'm going to dial the exposure down in just that, just that spot by going to another adjustment brush here. Click on New, hit Reset. I'm going to drag down my highlights and my white point a little bit. And that will just let me paint in those areas right there just to make sure that they are not too bright. If I turn that on and off, you can see, yeah, it just controls those a little bit better. Cool. So I think that's looking really great overall. There's one final thing I like to do to finish off most of my images, and that is add a little bit of a, a little bit of a vignette down here in the effects tab. And the reason for this is it just sort of puts a nice little dark ring kind of around the edge of the photo. What that does is it pulls your viewer's eye to the center of the frame where things are nice and bright and saturated and beautiful. So I think we're done. Let's take a look at our before and our after. If you hit the Y key, then why would I want to do that? You can see where we started and how far we came. We start with a raw file that was taken just to capture as good as possible data. Then by following the vision, bringing out the flowers, bringing out the clouds, bringing out the mountains, then we really achieved this beautiful image in the end. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it useful. And if you did like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. You can also join our newsletter for tons more photography tips and techniques. And be sure to check out some of our other post-processing videos or that full Lightroom tutorial here. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.